It was very interesting in the headlines there, we were saying, I mean, we have been discussing in our papers this morning the fact that it's the front page of the Times which is suggesting yeah. that uh, the Chancellor and Sunak are considering a Swiss-style arrangement with um, the European Union to get more trade. Um, and yet there we heard in the headlines that Number 10 have rejected this report. Where are we with this? Is it going to happen? Is it just the Times f flying a kite? Well, it sounds as though some sources at least have briefed it to the Times, but it's clear that the Prime Minister isn't happy about it. And unsurprisingly, of course, Boris Johnson and his chief negotiator, negotiator Lord Frost, ruled out a Swiss-style relationship with the EU uh, years ago. And Rishi Thunak will know that his Conservative backbenchers, and in fact plenty of Conservative ministers, know that that will be a total anathema to Conservative voters, who many of whom lent their votes to Boris Johnson in 2019 because they wanted mm. a proper Brexit to be done. So it seems as though this is something which maybe some perhaps more junior people in number 10 are very interested in uh, and would like the Times to think is going to happen. But Rishi Sunak is obviously very keen to pour cold water on it yeah. pretty quickly. Is it the what? Times making mischief a bit there, do you think? <laughs> Possibly, possibly, but definitely <laughs> the that one. they'll be... <laughs> yeah. It's gone down very, very badly, it has to be said, amongst um, big-name Brexiteers. Lord Frost, the Brexit negotiator himself, said if this is true, they need to seriously rethink it. Nigel Farage came out last night saying if this is true, the Tories deserve to be obliterated for betraying Brexit. Huge passions going out there. We're running a poll all morning, getting GB News viewers to, to vote on if they would vote again as they did to stay... And yet 81.5% currently would vote for Brexit. So certainly in GB Newsland, still very um, happy about their choice. And they're, they're really, really angry about what seems to be a dramatic U-turn in position here. Yeah, and it really would be a dramatic U-turn in position because a Swiss-style relationship would involve payments to the EU yes. budget, uh, more liberal rules on EU migration, uh, basically freedom of movement again, and it would involve probably the European Court of Justice having a say over what happens in Northern Ireland and possibly in the rest of Britain too. So it would be, well, it seems funny to even talk about it now, it seems like so long ago, but when we were all talking about Brexit in name only, there's a real danger uh, that that's what we would end up having if this report does end up being true. I have to say, I do find it quite hard to believe because the idea is that this is being mooted, this is what the Times report says, the idea is being mooted because it would, in exchange, the EU would make big concessions over the Northern Ireland Protocol and would end the uh, checks on trade that's coming through from the UK to Northern Ireland. That would imply that the whole plan has been sort of cooked up by the Northern Ireland office. And in the Northern Ireland office, you've got Chris Heaton-Harris yeah. and Steve Baker, who are both pretty hard-line Brexiteers, which makes me a little bit sceptical. Yeah. Well, you, you are sceptical. Let us talk to former Conservative advisor Claire Purcell, who makes um, what she... to find out what she makes of... First of all, Rishi has pledged to uh, give £50 million, which doesn't sound much to help fight a war. Is it going to be enough to help the U Ukraine? But first of all, let me get your take on um, on this story in the time today do you believe it or not um, like Olivia, I would find this pretty hard to believe, to be honest. And I think we're harping back to the sort of politics of the 1980s, where the government would quite often float out a policy in the media to see what reaction it got. And then if it wasn't very favourable, they would say, oh, well, it wasn't our policy anyway. This is just being made up. So it does have that little bit of let's see how this goes. Let's see what people think of it uh, and then retract it very, very quickly. I would suggest it would be the worst thing the government could ever suggest. It isn't Brexit. It is not what people voted for. And the majority of cabinet ministers and backbenchers would have a real problem with it. And that's to say, you know, without taking into account what the country would say. They wanted Brexit. They don't want to slide back into free movement, European Court of Justice and paying into the EU budget. That was the whole reason behind Brexit in the first place. So I think this is a little bit of mischief. I think it's trying out the waters and I don't think it'll happen. Is this the, the blob, you know, the civil service kind of floating ideas without ministerial consent? Or is this, um, as, as some suspect, people like Rishi and Jeremy Hunt would actually like a better, a closer relationship with, with the European Union and they're putting the ideas forward? Where does this nonsense come from? Well, the, well Rishi has just said no, hasn't he? Well, yeah, do you believe yeah. that? 
Did, well, why? I, 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 <laughs> oh, I, you I, are I, a terrible I'm cynic. suspicious <laughs> about all of it because this is what Brexit has said would happen. We were called nutters and conspiracy theorists. It's happening. It's happening within the first week of his premiership. Come on, Claire. <laughs> I, th I think it's probably a little bit of both. I think there are some civil servants that are, are putting the policy together as a sort of war cabinet to say, what if this happened? What if we did this? But I also think that there is probably some government hands in it too. I'm not necessarily sure it, it goes as far as a conspiracy theory. I would hate to think that uh, as somebody who voted for Brexit myself. I wouldn't want that to happen. But I do think that this is just testing the waters on all sides. And it's happened before. If you look back to when Margaret Thatcher was around, policies would quite often appear in the media and then just be dismissed immediately because they didn't go favourably. So it, it's one of these things in politics that you're just trying it out, see how it lands, see if there's any movement through it. But I think with this one, it is just absolutely dead in the water. About uh, Richie's uh, trip to uh, Ukraine at the moment, what do you make of that? Um, what do you think that he, or indeed Ukraine, is going to get out of it? And should we be saying you can have another £50 million? We don't know whether it's going to be in cash or in kind, do we? We don't. This is a £50 million defence uh, capability aid package, which includes 125 uh, anti-aircraft guns and, and technology and anti-drone technology uh, and all manner of kits like that. Now, it sounds an awful lot of money, and it is, but is it enough uh, to protect Ukraine from Putin's forces, well, that remains to be seen. But it isn't just the UK that is giving aid. So if you add that to everybody else, it is quite a lot. And it is right that we step in and we help Ukraine. But there does have to be some kind of recognition that the UK is pouring an awful lot in, in these defence missiles and bits of kits that we're sending over what's happening to our own stockpile. So I'm not saying that we shouldn't do it, but I think that we all have to be a little bit mindful of how much more can we do? Everybody needs to play their part. This war does need to be uh, concluded and Ukraine needs to be free. But I just wonder at what cost. It doesn't seem to be ending at the moment. And it just, it, it's a lot of money being poured in. It is also 12 million pounds going into the World Food Programme. There is four million going into the International Organization for Migration. So the United Kingdom really is stepping up and playing its part, as are other countries. But I do wonder where the pinch point comes as to how much we've got left to do.